If staying clear of financial struggles is your goal, then pay attention to these tips. While everybody's journey is different, avoiding these habits is universally essential. Let's go. Starting off with being impulsive. Now there are many situations where you're walking through a shopping mall or you're online shopping and you see something and you're like, oh my God, I've never seen this before. I've never known I wanted it before, but now that I've seen it, I must have it. And you buy it without thinking. And it's great, it's wonderful, you're so happy and you use it once or you probably never use it, right? But what you could have done is waited a day, maybe even waited five minutes, 10 minutes at the least, and it could have been like, yeah, that's cool, but do I need it? No, but it's still cool, right? You know, you can think about it, you can like look at it, but you don't need to buy it because you know, if you do all these impulsive purchases, let's say you have like two or three impulsive purchases a month, that's a lot of impulsive purchases at the end of the year. And that can add up to some serious money that you could have spent on your rent, you know, on your, your significant other, on a birthday gift, on investing and savings and stuff like that, right? You have to think of the opportunity cost, but you can't spend that money anymore because you spent it on something else that you're not going to really use. So it's in your best interest to step back, take a breath and think, do I really need this? And if you do, sure, buy it. I'm not stopping you. There are things that can be impulsive that you genuinely need. But in most cases, impulsive purchases, you don't need it. If you want it, you don't need it. Next up on our list is living beyond your means. Now, I'm sure we've all been in that scenario where you're walking down the street and you see someone with that Canada Goose jacket and that Prada bag, the Versace glasses and the Gucci shoes or whatever, and you're like, wow, that person wants to be seen you know, they're probably rich. They probably have tons of money to throw at things and stuff like that. And in reality, they don't. That's the image that they want you to perceive. These people, in most cases, are racked with debt, are buying things that they can't afford and they don't need, and they probably don't have enough money for rent next month, right? Because they're so obsessed with how what other people think of them. But in the end, the only person that should care is you because you're burning a hole in your wallet for people that don't care about you or if they do probably for five minutes right so try not to live beyond your means the only people's opinions that should matter to you are yourselves your family and your friends and if they're your true friends and your true family they don't care what you have they care who you are so don't cause yourself to go into debt especially credit card debt because that's awful uh, and just financial stress and ruin and all that bad stuff that comes with it. Just be who you are. And if you can afford it, great. But if you can't, please don't. Speaking of debt, the next thing is ignoring your debt. So this could be simply not paying off your debt or your credit cards or paying the bare minimum. But when you do these things, your debt's not going away, right? it's still going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And you think you might be doing something, but the next time you look at your bank account, it's probably going to be significantly higher than what it was a month ago because you're not taking your debt seriously. High interest debt is no joke. Some credit cards have interest rates of 15, 20, 30. I've even seen 35% interest on credit cards, which is insane, right? And in some cases, you might have, unfortunately, you might have to deal with collections or might have legal actions taken against you because you're not taking your debt seriously. And the other thing is your credit rating plays a significant role in your life. You can't buy a house with a bad credit rating. You can't rent an apartment with a bad credit rating. There's a lot of other things you can't do with a bad credit rating. So not taking your debt seriously is very bad because it can cause a lot of stress. It can ruin you financially and it could probably take you years, if not decades, to recover from it. So this means making some difficult choices. Stop spending money on things that you want and spend it on things that you need, which is getting rid of this debt because it's not fun and the sooner you get rid of it, the better. Neglecting your savings is another big one. When you spend the money that you just earned automatically, it doesn't help you. Right? There are people that live paycheck to paycheck or have $5 in their bank account and they're not preparing for the future. So to give you an example, I had a customer a little while back that wanted to buy a home. They were in their 50s. They were super excited to buy a home. 
They want to retire and relax. But when I went over their financial records, they had no life insurance, they had no savings, they had bad credit, and they had no retirement fund. They had nothing. And it was a very awful conversation to have because I had to tell these people I couldn't do anything for them. And they would, they're probably going to have to work for the rest of their lives because you know, they didn't have these things when they retire. So when I say this, please take it seriously. Even though your retirement may be 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, when you get to that age of retirement, let's say you're 65 or 70, and you have a million, $2 million saved up from all of your investments and savings account, you're going to be on your knees thanking yourself that you took yourself, your finances serious at 20, 21, because you're not going to have to be working into your 80s, into your 90s, and you can relax and have a well-earned retirement. So please, take your savings seriously, take your future seriously, because in the end, it doesn't hurt just you. It could hurt your spouse, it could hurt your kids, it could hurt everybody around you, and it has a much bigger effect than you think it does. Lastly, and the one that probably affects the most people is student debt. Now, it's become very common for people to leave college with 50, 80, 100, maybe even a quarter million dollars in debt. And this is, this is not right, right? Owing that much money at the start of your life when your entry-level job is paying you forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year, maybe sixty if you're lucky. So you're going to be in debt for 10, 15, 20 years for the rest of your life. And that's not even considered when you buy a house, when you buy a car, you know, all of your other expenses, and they'll add up. So, yeah, that private school might be cool and all your friends are going there and you're going to party and have fun, but you got to think about the future, man. Because at 22, owing $100,000, you're starting 10 paces behind everybody else. So take the time to think and say, hey, private school is 85000 public school is That might make more sense for the same job, same degree. Just weigh your options. My goal for this video was not to shock or scare you, but there are millions of people around the world dealing with these issues that we just talked about, right? They're scary, they're not fun, and these are good people. They don't deserve it. So if I can prevent even one of you from having to deal with these situations, then I think it's well worth it. And if you are dealing with this, these situations, write them in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you and potentially try to help you in any way that I can. So with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.